guys, this is a special edition of this web summit and we are right now in our Instagram feed and we have the privilege to have this, uh, I would say, genius. She's only 16 years old. Her name is Anaya Chada and she's a brain-computer interface developer and uh, right now I understand Microsoft said, okay, whoop, you're gonna work with us or we're gonna do something together. Thank you very much for being with us and uh, please tell us a little bit about um, what you do. Yeah, so my name is Anaya. I'm really fascinated by brain-computer interfaces. So that's technology that lets you connect your brain to machines or your brain to computers. So I've built brain-controlled remote control cars, brain-controlled music players and prosthetics. So like for example, you can turn the car by thinking about it. So. Okay, wait, 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 wait. wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're saying that you created something that if I think with my mind to move this car, the car will move. If I think with my mind that a prosthetic arm can move, the, the prosthetic arm will move. Elaborate that. that yeah. Answer. So how it works is with electrodes, so uh, EEGs, electroencephalograms that you take to your forehead and it picks up electromagnetic waves when your neurons fire. So when your neurons fire, they have something called like an action potential, which is a current, and it generates a field. So you can measure those signals in something called a brain wave. And when you do different things, you get different brain waves. So once you have that data, you can run it through a machine learning algorithm and apply things like Fourier transforms on it. And then you can say, and then you in extract insights. And you can say like, if I get this output from my algorithm, make the car go forward. If I get this output, make the car stop. If I get this output, make the car turn. And so for example, how it worked for me is when I entered a sort of meditative state, like like trying to be as calm as possible, the car would go forward. But if I was thinking about a million things, then my brain waves would change, my alpha waves would go above seven hertz, and then the car would stop. Okay, wait, wait, <laughs> please. Yeah. You're only 16 years old. Yeah. Okay, are you in high school? Still in high school? Or? Unfortunately, yeah. Do you guys You're still in high school. Yeah. And in high school, they're teaching you this, all Not this information? All. Not at all. Tell us about it. Yeah, so um, I'm part of this program, um, a human accelerator program called the Knowledge Society. And it's trying to create smart people to solve some of the world's toughest problems. So they were the ones that first exposed me to technologies like machine learning, genetics, blockchain, brain computer. At what age? Uh, I joined at 14. Okay. Yeah, so two years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're in two years in this uh, new uh, development of, of, of information of studying parallel to your high school studies. Yes. And now I'm working on building brain controlled virtual reality games with support from companies like Microsoft. Okay, tell us a little bit about how Microsoft identified you and joined and said, okay, Anaya, we need to talk. I actually reached out to Microsoft. You reached them? Yeah. How? Like in uh, Instagram or how you did it? Email. Email? Yeah. <laughs> like, and when you say, hi, I'm Anaya, I have 16 years old and I have this great idea? Uh, so I told them what I did, I asked to set up a meeting, and then in the meeting I explained exactly what I needed from them, why I needed their help, um, and they were like, yeah, we would love to help you, and I was like, oh my god. So then um, it happened from there. And I guess so I understand that you had a uh, few minutes ago this uh, panel, right? Yeah. More than 800 people. Mm -hmm. What was about it and how it was? It went so well. I spent the first eight minutes giving a presentation about brain computer interfaces, and then we had a panel about technology in the future. Uh, I, before brain computer interfaces, I spent two years in genetic research at a hospital in Toronto using CRISPR-Cas, which is a gene editing technology, and my lab, the Cone Lab, managed to cure muscular dystrophy in mice. So I learned so much while I was there. And then I also, this past summer, worked at Consensus, which is the largest blockchain company. So I, oh, I just, there's so many cool technologies, so I felt so good talking all about it, talking about the future. Your regular friends. Uh, they're also into this tech world, they're, they're also following all this uh, fascinating uh, information and, and coding and stuff that you're doing? No, my friends at school don't know about a lot of these technologies and sometimes people are really fixated on like getting the best grade and uh, so it's sometimes hard for me to find people at school who I really connect with just because everyone's like the school I go to is kind of competitive too so everyone's trying to do really well in school whereas I really care about like making an impact and like impacting billions of people one day so 
I've made a majority of my friends outside of school in the program, the Knowledge Society, because I found so many people who make me feel like I have like belonging and community and give me all those dopamine snacks and happiness. So. And now, yeah, how do you see the, in the next five years with all these uh, uh, brain system computing uh, things that you're creating? How do you see uh, the future of technology? What are we going to the human cap uh, capability of doing, applying what you are creating? So there's lots of different things that could happen. The very first application is what a lot of people are talking about, which is like for people who are disabled. So if I don't have an arm, now I can have a prosthetic arm. Or if I'm unable to walk, now we can read my brain signals and then re-stimulate my legs to give me back that movement that I didn't have. So that's more short term, and that's awesome. And then in the longer term, people are... So people have already achieved primitive brain-to-brain -brain communication. So two researchers at the University of Washington were playing a game of Tetris. But the first one was blindfolded, and the second one couldn't touch the controls. And the only way they communicated was... Um, they both were wearing EEG signals, or EEG uh, sensors, so one was looking at the screen and was thinking, rotate this piece, rotate this piece. And then the information was sent over the internet, processed, and then re-stimulated in the mind of the blindfolded man. And then the blindfolded man was able to make the, the movements without actually seeing anything. And so people think that in the very near future, brain-to-brain -brain communication might be possible. So instead of me talking to you, you would just already know because of like technology because so for example Ray uh, Kurzweil mm -hmm. he is the head of engineering at Google founder of Singularity University he thinks that by 2030 we might just all have brain chips to make us smarter and communicate faster we're going to be wearing brain chips yes where in our brain chips but like yes or something like that so Elon Musk is working on it mm -hmm. Elon Musk started a company called Neuralink which is working on creating a mesh that gets inserted into your brain that can track how all your neurons are firing, and it's, it's very interesting. The way that they do it is with a piezoelectric crystal. So a piezoelectric crystal is what they use in a lighter. If you squish the crystal, the lighter, or the, if you squish the crystal, it generates a current, and then the lighter lights. And if you send a current through the crystal, then the crystal squishes. So what they're doing is, if they have lots of mini, mini crystals beside all of your neurons, when a current passes the crystal, the crystal will oscillate. So then they can measure the oscillation, so they can measure the um, electricity of each of your individual neurons. And then how do you see, or where do you see in the next uh, five years? There are a lot of technical difficulties that need to be overcome in order to get this to become a reality. I feel like brain-computer interfaces will continue to be developed just because of the large incentives that exist. And definitely, in the next 30 years, we're going to start seeing people with brain implants to make us more of an evolved species. Because something that's really fascinating is that machine intelligence is increasing exponentially in development over time. Like quantum computers, self-driving cars, um, machine learning all happened in the last five years. But human intelligence has remained stagnant. Albert Einstein was born a hundred years ago. Nikola Tesla over a century ago. The smartest people aren't with us in the last five years. Human intelligence has remained stagnant. So now people think that the only way we're going to get the best future for humanity is if we increase human intelligence as well. My friends, there you have it. Remember this name, Anaya Chada. Anaya, congratulations. Thank you very much. Fascinating. Um, for me, you're a genius. Congratulations for being here. Congratulations Thank to you the so fans. Much.